Yo, dog, Kenny Boucher here, next level painting, hitting you up with another painting tutorial on the literal best of all days. Yo, check it out, Nurgling eBay Rescue 2019 edition. We're getting ready for LVL. It's almost the anniversary. So real quick, these aren't so bad in the world of out-of-print Nurglings that I collect almost fanatically, but I've cornered the market on on eBay. They look to be, you know, fairly painted with a little bit of wash, right? Pretty aggressively, but it's actually a pretty solid starting place. What we're doing here is we're glazing in just some rando colors. We got some greens, some browns, some blacks. We got some reds. We got a bunch of shit on our palette. And we're just swirling them together into like a mud color. We're thinning it down. We're just basically attacking anything that looks a little chipped, anything in the recesses. We're just going rapid fire, real thin, just letting it absorb into those sections of the models and maybe like blend in cover some of the shadows with really heavy washes the big deal is these are really small models and so while the wash and dry brush game is pretty solid you know technique it doesn't really hold up on tiny little models that need uh, more hyper highlighting to be observed from a distance these guys are like the size of you know a pinky nail so we're just gonna go through this is gonna be kind of our base coat we're gonna try to do our best to be in real time here no real time lapsing we're still we're moving while washes are still well, these glazes as it were are still wet and now I'll just grab some pure green it's you know it's a little dirty it may not be the right green but it's okay we're gonna work our way into what we want and now what we're doing is we still have the same big old brush it's kind of a frayed brush not the best brush in my game we're just focusing on some of the raised areas the bigger regions of the face the muscles the ribs the knees and we're just blending it in and we're not really putting too much thought into what the colors are we're going kind of off of what the original artist did and we're just going to kind of exaggerate it so this green is not the best green at this moment but it will be when we're done so we're just going to work it on work it in keep it thin let it blend in it's almost a wet blend or a two brush blend with a single brush we're just going to keep it going and he's got some red spots that kind of bled over on some of these regions we're just going to pretend they don't exist and just let the, the thin colors that we're using kind of blend into them, maybe create some realistic sores or blemishes. Keep going. You see now one of these Nurglings is kind of brownish. We took almost the same green. We just mixed in a little bit of skin skin tone. Kind of thinned it down a little bit. A little bit of brown. It's basically the same color we just used in the previous Nurgling, just with an excess of skin tone. And we're just going pretty aggressive on highlighting those muscles. You can see it's already more interesting. You can already see more of the model as we exaggerate these highlights. This whole process didn't take very long. You can bang three bases of these out in a night while listening to an audiobook. The other one's got a slight bluish hue to it, so I'm going to embrace that. I added a little bit of blue to the same slurry that we've been using. See, it's kind of in that pastels range. Same thing. He's kind of, these are interesting models with pretty exaggerated features. We're just going to go with it. Okay, while some of that might be drying, we're going to use red, some pure red. And we're just going to make sure all the, you know, guts and things that they're throwing up and the maggots, we're just going to make them all the same color. Okay, remember these guys are pinky nail size. We're not going to go crazy delineating between what a maggot and a weird Nurgle mutation is. We're just, we're just saying they're all the same color. We're going to just blend it in to the skin where it might need to be. So just going to work this tail up, let it blend into his flesh. Maybe go back to the previous color, see right there, thin it out, and just kind of lightly feather it in. So maybe there's a delineation right there. So it's, all, it's real simple, guys. We're just moving back and forth. These Nurglings are fine. If you find some Nurglings on eBay or any model on eBay, you don't always have to strip it to, to play with it. Like, I want these in my army. I don't want the commitment of having to build and paint all the Nurgling bases, but I do like the old, old school out of print ones. So now where we are, guys, is we're introducing a little bit of flesh tone to the red and we're just going to ripple highlight some of these maggots or whatever they are and ripple highlighting to me is just basically just you know pointillism we're just dot 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 over the ripples in what appears to be maggots right but like i said we're not going to paint them white we just want fun colors contrast a lot of bright colors we're going to keep it going and our flesh tones are always really solid highlights to reds uh, you can go that route, you can go with the orange route, but we want it to be flesh, so therefore the flesh. Real quick, exaggerated uh, slashes as we move up into the ass of that one nurgling. Keeping it real. All right. So now we're just doing some final inspections, looking at the mouth. Do we want to do anything in there? He's got some teeth. He's already got some red in there, so maybe we'll just go into the teeth. 
Maybe just drag a couple slashes in a couple regions. No big deal. So he's got a bunch of red staining in there from the previous paint job. We just grabbed some ivory and we're just gonna quickly hit those teeth. So now the, the inner red of his mouth makes more sense because whoever previously painted it didn't delineate between the two. Round two highlights. We're just basically gonna take the same colors we just used, add a little bit more brightening or highlighting into it and we're just gonna exaggerate these muscles a little bit more with a smaller brush and skinnier slashes. You can see instantly the definition just starts to pop on this model. Very low uh, commitment. I imagine the guy who painted it before spent more time just getting all the colors on, letting the wash dry and dry brushing it, right? So if you just sprayed them kind of an easy color to, you know, like an army painter, pre-colored primer, and then just went off of that, you could have saved yourself some time and come out with a better product. So those are the techniques that I'm trying to show here in an eBay rescue. So we're just popping out the same types of details we always do on faces, cheekbones, eyebrows, noses, lips, everything. Just pop in those highlights. And it's actually kind of interesting on a small model like this. Some of these uh, details are actually easier to paint. That's at least in my experience because it's just line work now. It's not letting things softly blend into other things. It's very small and exaggerated details or exaggerated highlights over these small details tend to look pretty good. You see, we're getting some fun effects here. The muscles are looking pretty alien, pretty abstract. We're not putting any thought whatsoever to anything like lighting. We're just going nuts. Center mass highlighting only, muscle bellies, slashes. Same thing on all the rest of them. We have all the colors still on our, on our palette, so at your leisure, go to, go to town. Uh, we did discover we missed one of these little red tails here, so let's just throw some red on it, maybe do a quick little mix with our flesh tone just to get it up to the place that the previous ones were at. I'm kind of skipping a step there. Too easy. So, I'm liking where we're at so far. Now it's time to start slashing some highlights in. This is that fleshy brown from the previous stages. We're gonna, make, we're gonna find the right mix, the right consistency, and we're gonna just to carve him up just like we did on the green nerdly. Boom, shoulder. Little bicep elbow connection, his thigh, some folds right there. He's got some ears, some ripples on his back, some pox marks. We're just gonna hit it all, just super quick. It's not very difficult once you get locked into the chair. Pretty easy, pretty therapeutic. I find a lot of enjoyment in this type of painting where you're just being kind of organic, kind of sketchy, but I do think you get a good product, especially on these small little dudes. Boom, shoulder, bicep, elbows and knees, everything. You see that real quick, real quick, light brush pressure, keeping the paint thin. Just let it naturally highlight it. It's gonna blend into the previous color. And the fun thing is almost all three of these nurglings or all three of these nurglings are using almost the same slurry of colors that we're drawing from that we mixed up. It's just about how much blue do we do we drag into it, how much ivory do we drag into it, things like that. So we just dragged a little bit more sky blue into the slurry. Now we're just going to slash up some of these highlights exactly like we did in the previous nurglings as I try to keep this as continuous and cut free. I don't want there to be too much movie magic here. I want you to see how easy this really is for me in real time. And therefore, these techniques should be easy for you. We're not doing anything that takes any actual skill. Uh, I would say the only cool thing that we're doing that's kind of unique is the way we're drawing from our colors. Like I said, it's just a pile of browns and greens and reds and we just kind of add whatever we need to it. Now the final highlight is where you have to be a little bit more precise. We dragged in some yellow and some green out of our slurry. And now we're just carving up these final highlights with a bit, a bit of pure yellowish green. Really gonna help it pop. It's gonna give it some more neon qualities. He's really gonna look fun on this base. Instead of just a straight up pastel green with some dirty browns in them. And there you go, you see just every highlight, you just kind of repeat it, keeping it small, keeping it straight, keeping it thin so it can, you know, through the, the magic of glazing, sort of blend in. I'm feeling that. These guys are looking a hell of a lot better. Now we're gonna also paint his horns. His horns were never painted, they were just green. So we just grabbed some pure ivory. Just gonna knock them out real quick. We're not really too thin here on the paint. Uh, we have maybe a small amount of water here, just keeping it kind of thick, just so it sticks easy. There you go. That's a, another piece of definition that really goes a long way to hit those horns, if they have any horns or whatever. Claws, teeth, things like that. 
same thing round three on the the throw up pile ripple highlighting a little bit of ivory mixed in to that flesh just give ourselves some nice gleaming highlights kind of make you maybe make it look like it was wet the way it's highlighted and don't worry if not all your dots are precise they will fade away they will kind of mute out as they dry and it will look really good to realize we're heavily zoomed in on this image these guys are tiny these dots are even tinier they're smaller than the period in a sentence in a book you know they'll look fine boom let's get all those little highlights rippled in this is probably represents about you know 20 minutes of work on one base and that's with setting up cameras and everything like that if you had three of these bases you could do them about the same amount of time if you weren't distracted by you know trying to film this pretty easy ebay is an amazing resource for getting out of print models uh quote unquote pro painted <laughs> it's like someone just did all the base work for me okay we're gonna go back to our dirty brown pile we're gonna do one final pass of kind of just glazing in some shadows on the green anywhere where maybe I can still see some of the original wash poking through or it doesn't look super clean just kind of round two and this will give me an opportunity to, to blend any greens that maybe are not that smooth in maximizing the effect giving us as much of an advantage here in the painting scores department as possible and now we can say that this was a collaboration whoever I bought this from on eBay I'll have to look that up in my history Big shout out. <laughs> yes. And now here we go. I noticed that on the blue guy, I feel like maybe he can have a little bit more of a dramatic highlight. So we're going to add just a little bit of ivory to our mix and just pop out a few ripples on him just to give him that final look. But like I said, we're not going to go too crazy. They are tiny. But now that look at them, looking a lot better, a lot more clean, a lot more pro. They're not awful to look at. I can't, I mean, and I can't, I can't say this enough, like, dry brushing and washing is a, just a, it's a very decent technique for getting things off the ground, but it does kind of break down on a small model like this. You want smoother, more aggressive, more contrast, like, just, you want to go with it, you know what I'm saying? And you want your um, highlights to be on the bright side, you know, like, versus the wa heavy washing, like, darkens the recesses, and so your contrast coming from something very dark. It's very difficult to appreciate that on something this small. Here we go. Now this is sort of how they looked like when they started. You can see it's not bad. It's just some dry brushing over some wash, but it's kind of hard to see. It's hard to appreciate unless you're zoomed in this far. Now our, our our quick, you know, eBay rescue has breathed some life into these models that can be appreciated from a distance. But let's talk about how many we've got on deck. Oh, real quick, missed this couple of uh, highlights here. I guess while looking at that model, I realized I could do a little more. So we pulled out some of our pure highlight color, and we just want to dot a few of our eyes across a few of our T's with a final bit of yellow highlighting on this green dude. He's kind of our leader on the base. I've kind of decided he's in charge of these Nerglins. He knows what's up. You can just tell. Obviously, green is the best color, so that makes sense. Ballin. Love it. Some pure yellow. Goes a long way to highlight green. Gives you some of that neon qualities. I guess we can do the same thing with the other guys if we want. <laughs> we can take them up to 11. There we go. Pow. Unabashed, ridiculously contrasty highlighting right here. Just knock it out. Too easy. Same thing we've done four times already. And here's some of the ones we've already done. I've, these are some eBay rescues I've already been working on right here. Different seller on eBay. And you can see we already started working on the bases using a little bit of pumice, a little bit of soft body black. If you guys aren't familiar with those products, I'll show them to you here in a second. We've done many videos utilizing those products. Here we go, Vallejo texture right here. This is really easy to use and I love Secret Web Miniatures. One of my favorite products they make is soft body black. It's a wash. It's amazing for doing bases and also other things. So just to show you on, on, on this model how I would approach it, you're going to grab some uh, pumice, grab your shitty brush, 
and you're just gonna start painting it on using more of a dabbing motion, more of a stippling technique. You want there to be texture. You want to. You don't want to just keep pushing it around and scraping the plastic. You just want to pile it up. Give yourself a nice thin coat. It takes about an hour to dry. Pretty easy. So you can get a, you can get a bunch. A little bit goes a long way here. So you just pile it up. Create some nice texture. Very very easy product to use. And let me show you on um, what it looks like when it's done. But also I want to show you guys soft body black how it works which I have in previous videos. So forget that, we're gonna skip that. Here's a little bit of ivory. Show you a quick highlight. Hopefully I can link in the description box below some of our previous videos that we've done this technique on in a little bit more detail. We're gonna lightly dry brush a little bit of this ivory into a base that we already did the soft body black on. And sorry guys, I'm a little over the pace today. This is the third video I cut today. And uh, this is kind of a long one. So once you get some light dry brushing in, give you some definition with that ivory, then you can start talking about painting the rim of the base. You can start talking about putting grass on it, all sorts of things. My man uh, actually used some Goblin Green OG flock on this. I just Vallejo'd right over it. eBay Rescue 101. Here's some black. We're just gonna quickly paint the rim of the black to get rid of that Goblin Green. I always prefer black rims on bases. I think they sharpen the model. I'm just holding it down, kind of swirling it on the, the, the paper like this. Any green that's still poking through, you can just kind of water down the black and just let it creep into the base, kind of stain it. Pretty easy. Reach in for a little bit of water if you need to, but pretty simple stuff right here. 2019 edition. Last time we bought Nerglings, we thought we, we bought six units of three off of different various eBay auctions, and we bought another six units. <laughs> so here we go, Gamer's Grass. I'm gonna quickly make this base look a little bit better. This is an amazing product. They're self-adhesive, but I strongly recommend Super Glue. I'm just doing a quick little dry fit. I want that little U pattern to be right there. What I like to do is I like to get all my bases ready, do all the grass at once. And the way I do that is I grab some Super Glue. You can use uh, Elmer's Glue. It's also very handy for this. Well, I had Super Glue handy. And so what I'm gonna do is I'll make a little pile. I'm gonna stab this piece of grass real quick. You can use tweezers too. Just kind of dip it in there just a little bit. Push it on the base. And I'm like, okay, maybe we'll just grab a little one right here. Same deal. Maybe just kind of continue the U right here like it's kind of broken and random. But hey, there it is, guys. Anyway, check me out on Patreon. Check me out on Twitch, guys. Play on, players. If you like these tutorials, check out Next Level Painting on Patreon. Become a patron of the arts today. We offer early and exclusive access to our videos and a rewards program for different pledge levels. Patreon is PayPal and credit card secure, so you don't have to worry about that. We use 100% of the money to improve our process.